I'm Loudon Stearns, an associate professor at Berkeley and an instructor at Berkeley Online. And this is the performance tool that I'm going to show you how to create in this video. We're going to be taking a variety of different hits from really any sounds that you have and creating a performance instrument using Sampler in Ableton Live. And every step along the way, from finding the little hits that you like to dividing them up and importing them to Sampler and then manipulating them in real time with mapping and macro controls, takes advantage of the push the whole time and a lot of the new Live 9 features. So I'm excited to show you this. and. You know, this is the kind of thing that I explore in my advanced Ableton class uh, along with students. We'll kind of have chats and we'll kind of explore these kind of techniques throughout the entire semester. And also we explore these kind of ideas in my composing electronic music classes here at Berkeley Online. So let's check it out. So the first step in this process is going to be finding 64 separate hits. And I'm working in the session view here, so I have the push set to session mode. Uh, we have two main modes for the push. The first one's going to be our note mode. Uh, where we can play notes into individual tracks. But right now, I'm in session mode, so it's really imitating the session view over live. Now, um, what I have here is the same clip repeated eight times on each one of the tracks. And the idea is going to be to get 64 separate hits that I can play back in a sampled instrument to create that really interesting kind of sort of pseudo record scratching type of sound, make kind of a performance out of this. Now, the choice of sounds really is up to you and kind of where the creative part is. I've chosen a really wide range of different sounds because I think they'll kind of go together well in the end. So I have some just crazy atmospheres. I have um, a little, some, some crazy kind of robot sounds, some vinyl grooves, uh, a little bit of slap bass, and a variety of other sounds that I can kind of chop up and put into this whole texture in the end. Now, I'm trying to use push as much as possible in this process. And when I'm trying to find little hits to use, we can use the clip view in push to really kind of fine tune those start points. But before I do that, I just want to point out the modes that I have the clips in. So right now, you'll see if I, if I play a button here, we hear one of these sounds, and it stops as soon as I let go of the key, or let, I let go of the button. And that's because I have the launch mode for every one of these set to gate. And that means when I hold the key down, it plays. I'm going to let go of the button, it stops. Perfect for what we're trying to do here. Now, I also want these to play back really fast as I go through this and not have any kind of lag. So two settings really help with that. The first, I took my global quantize and set it to none. And then I also put all the clips into RAM. Now, that might seem like a lot going into RAM, but remember, I'm using the same clip repeatedly, so it's really not that bad. But by putting them all into the RAM, it can really kind of be um, playable and really fast under your fingers. So it really feels like a nice instrument. And now I want to create kind of separate hits or find interesting hit points for each one of these clips. And I can move through the project in a really simple way. I hold a key, or I play a key, and then we, because we have clip mode selected here, I have clip start as an option. You'll see it right here in the push, and I can just start moving that. I like that. So I can find interesting hits. And I can kind of move through the whole push just finding really interesting hits for every one of the different sounds. So it goes pretty quickly. Now, as you're moving through this, you may also find that you want to change the gain of the individual clips. You'll notice that the, uh, the clip I'm kind of doing this on has a very wide dynamic range, and some of these hits are kind of quiet. But in the overall texture in the end, I probably want it to be similar volumes to each other. So as I'm going through, if I find a hit that I like in a place that has kind of a lower volume, like right here maybe, I might want to bring up the gain for that one hit so it balances nicely with all the other clips that I'm playing. So I've gone through and given every single clip an interesting start point. So even right now, it actually ends up being a pretty interesting performable device. So I can play all my little bits. And if I was to bring in just another groove to kind of play along with, uh, which is kind of nice to have, bring one in here. So we could kind of perform this way, but I'm using lots of tracks, and I don't have all the, the kind of control that I want. And I really want to be able to use this slider right here for some interesting, for some interesting kind of pitch movement. 
So what we're going to do now is build a sampled instrument. We're going to use um, Live Sampler and kind of take all these clips and put them into a single instrument that we can play. So the first thing we'll have to do is create a new MIDI track for Sampler. We'll grab that here. Take the default one, and drop it on the new track, or just double click it to start a new one. And we can actually drag all these clips in at once. So if I click in the upper left-hand corner, shift click, the bottom left-hand one, I've selected all 64 clips. I can just grab one, drag it over to the sampler track and down to sampler. And if we look at the zone list, I'm actually filling up the zones entirely. So I have 64 different sounds in there. Now, right now, if I was to hit a key on this, we'd hear every one of those things happen at once. So we're going to kind of try to avoid that right now. And we're going to kind of distribute these so I have one clip per, or one attack per key. And to do this, I'm just going to adjust the overall range. So all the different zones are selected. I'll take the end of the, the range, the key range here, and make sure you have key range on. And I'm going to bring this down to D sharp three. Now I did that because that's halfway through. It's the 64th uh, note. And once I do that, I can right click or control click and choose distribute ranges equally. Once you've done that, you'll see that now we have one sample per note all the way across the keyboard. Perfect. So now I can switch out of session view and over to uh, notes view in, on my push here. So I'll, I'll rename this track. Performance. I have the track record enabled. And I'll switch over to notes view on the push. And we see uh, the image has changed because now it's for, the design is for kind of melodic input. But now I can play different zones. Now, we have a, a kind of a strange situation here, though. Let me show you. Right now, this is set up for C major. But in my situation, I really want to have access to every note, right? So what I really need to do is start changing the scale so I can have 64 separate notes on the push. And we also want to start it down at C negative 2, so this entire pad is filled with my different uh, hits that I've created here. To do that, we're going to go over to scale mode. And the first thing we'll do is change from in key over to chromatic. So now if I play up and down, I do have access to all the notes, but you'll notice when you're in chromatic mode, if I play this note, this one also lights up, meaning that they're both the same exact note, and I want 64 separate ones. So to do that, we're going to have to enter another portion of the, um, of the scale mode, which we get to when we hold shift. When we hold shift, we get another set of options for how the pads are laid out. And if we choose one of these sequential modes, that means no pad will be doubled up at all. So we'll have separate buttons, separate notes for every one of these pads. I'll choose sequential up. And now I'm going to go octave down um, as far as I can. So that way, this first pad is the first hit there. And you'll notice that I never see any other second light light up because I now have access to 64 separate notes on the push. And our sample instruments coming along well. The next thing I want to do with this is get this pitch slider really to do something interesting. Now, you may find as you build a sampler that it's a little quieter than you want it to be. And the reason is, with, with a sampler, the assumption is that you're going to play more than one note at a time. And as you start playing more and more notes, the volume kind of builds up and builds up. So you may find, if you go to the Filter Global tab in Sampler, that the main volume is at negative 12. I'd suggest kind of bring that up maybe to negative 1 or negative 2, somewhere around there. So it's a little more volume for yourself. And now we have a nice level, and we can start playing this device. The next thing I'd like to try, uh, maybe turn off the filter. What's happening with this filter at times is uh, key tracking is on. So we're playing really low on the keyboard, all the way at C negative 2. That means that low pass filter is really, really low. and might be kind of getting the brightness, uh, taking away the brightness from your sound. So if the filter is on, you might want to turn that off. And you might hear a little more brightness out of things. A little better, but we can play with the filter later maybe. The next thing I might want to check out with this is uh, kind of play it along with the groove, right? Let's see how it sounds. So we'll get that groove going that we had before. Close up my zone list, and we'll play a groove. And now I can take my myself back to that track and a 
Now you'll notice that as I play this, it's only allowing me to play one note at a time. Now depending how a sampler is set up for, by default for you, you might want to be able to play more than one note at a time. And we can adjust that in the voices parameter in the global tab or the filter global tab in sampler. So right now I'm going to adjust my voices. I like to be able to play at least four notes at a time, maybe eight. So I'll just adjust this up to eight. And that way I can hold one pad. <laughs> And I can get kind of layers going all at once, and I can also play on top of that groove. Perfect. Now, the next thing I might want to do with this is really get pitch bend doing some interesting things. If I try this now, I get a little bit, but I'd like a really dramatic pitch bend as I use this. So I'll go over to the modulation tab um, where we can add. LFOs and envelopes, and we'll kind of look at that in a moment. And then we'll go over to the MIDI tab, and we'll look at the pitch bend range. Right now it's at plus two. Let's bring that up all the way to plus 24, so I can get really interesting. Get really interesting kind of pitch glides with this. Right? These are kind of a lot of fun, particularly with like grooves and melodic instruments. Flat. And maybe some of my vocal stuff that I had at the end there. Sports. Nutrients. Enter the show. Which is kind of fun. Now, the next thing I might want to do this is make it really kind of rhythmic. And an arpeggiator is a great choice to add some kind of rhythmic variations to this. Um, we can have it kind of in sync with my groove. And it also makes it so you might have noticed that I brought in bass lines and things to the sampler that aren't really in time with my global tempo. Now, uh, one thing you'll find when you do this process that if you have clips that are warped, in your session view and you bring them to sampler, when they're in sampler, they won't be warped. So you might want to crop your clips, kind of make those warpings permanent in the session view before moving to the sampler. Or you can do what I'm doing, which is just use little, little bits of audio and kind of create the rhythm kind of in real time with your performance. So I like adding a sampler to this. Let's check out how we would do that. The first thing I would do is go over to my browser and grab a MIDI effect and we'll grab the arpeggiator. I'll drag and drop that right before sampler. So with that, now I can hold the key and just get that one little bit repeated. And right away, you can get some pretty interesting. Right, it's very easy to get really interesting kind of out of tune, kind of melodic elements. A lot of fun, really. Now, since we have the arpeggio, we can also hold multiple notes. If I hold just a random three notes, can easily get that kind of thing, right? These really rhythmic kind of little hits. Now, we want to start making it so I have enough control on the push to really make this kind of a playable, kind of performable thing. And to do that, we're going to have to start adding macro controls and my knobs to kind of control interesting parameters on both the arpeggiator and the sampler. So far, I've had the push in this notes mode, and I'd like to start adjusting parameters using these knobs on top. We'll have to move the push over into device mode, and we'll see the important parameters of the device that we currently have selected. So uh, even right away, with this, it's, um, it's controlling the arpeggiator. So if I was to just hold uh, a note, and I can get different rhythmic values, on that one note. Now, I find that's a bit rough because the range is so extreme. Like if I, if I hold a different note, it's going to do whole measures, which I probably will never need. And it goes all the way up to 128, which is kind of interesting, but not really what I want in this, in this setting. So we're going to have to figure out a way that I can adjust the, uh, the ranges of these different parameters. And also, I want to choose some parameters on the sampler as well, like the duration of the hits might be nice to change, the volume of the hits, maybe pitch of certain ones. So we're going to have to start looking into creating um, an instrument rack. And to do that, I just select both the arpeggiator and the, uh, the sampler. So I'll just shift click and select them both. Then I'll right click or control click and choose group. You can also use the command G uh, key command. Once we have that, immediately I'm going to open up the macro controls section. And you'll see right away the push 
start saying macro 1 through macro 8. Now, I really like that kind of uh, rhythmic division change that I had on that first knob before, but the range was too wide. So what we'll do is actually set up a macro control on the instrument rack, and then we'll adjust its range appropriately, and hopefully we'll see that on the push. Let's try it out. So I'm going to go to map mode right here. We see everything inside the instrument rack turns green. I can click on one of the parameters, and that was that rate that I was changing, which works well. And then I'll map it to macro one. And the cool thing is right away, it says synced rate here, right in my instrument rack. Um, and we're going to adjust the range. So I'll take the range. I kind of like it to get quick, so I get a kind of like really repeated note in the pitch bang, kind of gives it a, a cool quality. But I think 128 was just way too much. Let's try going to 48 for that. And then for a max rate, I think. Um, if I want whole notes, I can just hold it for a whole note and maybe turn the device on and off. So let's go to uh, quarter note as the max range. Then I can exit mapping mode with the map button there. And uh, great thing, immediately the push says synced rate because I've mapped it to a single parameter. So the name automatically um, kind of goes through from the arpeggiator to the macro control and from the macro control right into the push, which is kind of nice. So now if I, if I hit play and play and hold one of these notes. So we're getting somewhere, right? We can get interesting little characters. We have things uh, nice and synchronized. But there are a couple more effects I'd like to be able to manipulate in this. Uh, the first one might be the uh, length of those individual hits. Right now, they're holding out for a really long duration, but I might want to have short, punchy hits, maybe like someone kind of playing with the um, transform button on a DJ mixer or the crossfader to get some really interesting character out of it. And that's really going to be controlled by the amplitude envelope of my sampler. Let's check it out. Go over to the sampler and I'll look at that filter global tab. And right away we see that uh, sustain is all the way up, release is very quick, and the attack is very quick. Um, so things are holding out for the whole duration. Now, for a moment, I'm just going to turn off the arpeggiator and hold a note in the sampler. We just hear it folds out. Now, I might want to have really short percussive hits. To create that, I can reduce the sustain parameter in my amp envelope and then increase the decay parameter slightly. And now, no matter how long I hold the key, I'm just going to get a short percussive hit, which actually works really well with my arpeggiator. Let's try that out. Turn the arpeggiator back on. Let's try some of this stuff. Turn into a pretty good bass player. And with the groove. Lots of possibilities there. But there are times when I'd want to have um, maybe the duration of that be longer, or I might want to have that sustain up. So this is a chance that we can take um, those macro controls to give us a little more control right in these eight knobs. So my goal really is to kind of have this be a performance tool so that I have notes under my keys or I have those individual hits under the keys. I have pitch bend right here and then eight really nice knobs up top to train to change the you know the quality of the of the instrument. So I might put that kind of sustain character, that decay length on this last knob. And we do that just like we did the rate of the arpeggiator. I go into map mode of my rack here. I'll go and just try the sustain parameter and I'll map that to the last macro. And then we can just stay in map mode and then take that decay parameter and put that on macro 7. And let's try this out. Now we may have to adjust the ranges, but let's see what we got here. Now, right now, if I'm holding the key, it's playing back so fast and so short I can't hear it. But if I start increasing the decay, I'll be better off. Now, one thing to notice, the parameters on the push aren't that, Mac, aren't that instrument rack right now because I have the uh, sampler selected. If I go back to selecting on the instrument rack, though, all these are going to uh, change over to the, to the uh, instrument rack, which is, which is what I want. We also see that we have um, the decay right here uh, labeled and sustain right there labeled. So maybe I'll hold this. Just move out decay, or I could bring up sustain. Right? And I want to set some good ranges for those. So let's see, I think sustain, I think I like going all the way from 0 to 1, or all the way from, yeah, 0 to 1. And then decay, maybe that'll be the shortest around 291 and longest around one second. So I can adjust that again by going to the map mode and then looking at my parameters here. We like this one about 290. Somewhere around there, milliseconds. And then this one about one second, or 100 milliseconds, or 1,000 milliseconds. Let's try it.
Great. So it seems like we have good ranges for that. Now, some of the things I might want to adjust with this, we have the synced rate going, we have control of the decay of the individual notes. I, I might want to be able to turn that arpeggiator on and off with one of these knobs. Easy to accomplish. Again, we go to map mode. I'm just turn on my device uh, on-off button here and map that to macro two. I also like the hold option, and we'll just grab that right there, which is the hold in the arpeggiator, and we'll put that to macro three. Let's see how that hold option works. So I can turn the device on and off by turning this knob, and then I can turn hold on and off by turning that one right there. So if I have hold on, I can hold a couple, I can play a couple notes, and they'll just keep playing. If I play another note, it'll switch over to being that one that's playing back. And now the great thing about that is once I have that kind of playing, and we can kind of create interesting things because I have my hands free to kind of move the rate and the pitch bend and the, um, the device on off, maybe that hold parameter I can turn off. So I like that having those. Uh, that might also be something interesting to use with like a foot pedal. So you can turn it off, turn it on and off with a, with a foot pedal. I also would like to be able to do some filtering with this. And we have the filter built right into Sampler. So if I turn that on, I'll, I'll kind of give myself two different controls that I like in filter. We're going to have filter cutoff and the morph parameter. So we'll do that with five and six. So I'll make five my morph. And I'll make six filter frequency. And then we also want to turn off that key tracking, which we mentioned earlier will cause the filter to move based on what key we're playing on the, on the push. And since we're like way down in that key range, the filter would always be way down. We don't really need that here. So I'll just take key tracking of the filter and turn that all the way off. Now, this filter morph is a really interesting thing. So we can just look at the display here. As I move filter morph, it moves from a low pass filter um, to more of a band pass filter and then goes to high pass and then kind of brings in this notch to goes back to low pass. I don't need that whole range. I just like the idea of going from low to high. So that's at about there is the high end. So let's again adjust the mapping ranges. So I think you're getting the, the idea of this is we're going to keep on mapping things and also adjusting ranges. The beautiful thing about electronic music and being an electronic performer is that you can kind of control how many mistakes you can really make, right? And my idea here is I want to make it so that Everything I do with the knobs is always going to sound pretty good, right? I don't want to have a position I can have these in where it just sounds horrible. So now that we've kind of built the performance instrument, we can kind of clean up our live set a bit. And I'll just get rid of all these tracks that we're using kind of to find the hits and to, and to create the instrument. And we're left with a, a groove and my performance instrument here. And I just want to show how you might want to go ahead and kind of record little performances and create variations using this device. And you can record right into clips um, using the push. One thing I would suggest is setting a uh, fixed length so you can get a fixed length recording. So you don't have to worry about kind of starting and stopping where you're recording. You're always going to get, say, a four bar loop. And I'll just set this to four bar. Again, I'm just holding fixed length down and then choosing four bar there. Um, no problem. I'm also going to have the automation recording on, so I can record automation of my macro controls as I record. And uh, let's just try it out. I'm just going to hit record here. And you'll see that live is recording. I have a four bar clip, and I can kind of play little things in here. And the great part about this is you can kind of be sparse and kind of build the clip up as it loops. So let's just try something out here. Right at the beginning of the loop. That's going to play back every time now, and I can add on top of it. So I think it's kind of fun to kind of play with that pitch bend over top. Because you can get those really cool kind of quick jumps in it. Then you can always go ahead and quantize your performance.
and you can get your macro controls kind of performing in real time. Now, if I want to try another variation on this, I could just hit my duplicate button. It's going to immediately create another scene. And I want to try a different kind of performance of all this. So I'll just hit delete, gets rid of that clip, and I can create a new clip um, with new performance. So I'll try that. I'll just hit my record button again, and now we're recording a new clip. This time I might want to bring in uh, that arpeggiator. So I'll turn my device on, turn hold on, and I'll set my rate maybe to sixteenths, my sustain all the way down. And we see that I had recorded the sync rate, so that kind of goes in with it, and I can... We can kind of keep moving through this way, finding stuff we like. Maybe I don't dig on that so much. I can always hit delete, and I can try it again. Now, one thing to be aware of is while you're recording, all those kind of controls will be recorded into the clip. So you may want to kind of set them up before you do record, kind of the way you want them to be in the clip. So I might want to have my sync rate to be 16th notes, my sustain to be all the way down. Digging on that, I can record a clip. And we can keep moving along, playing with all our macro controls and playing our notes um, on the push here. So that's how I might go and build kind of a performance tool with Ableton Live and Push. Um, you know, everything's dependent on the sounds used in the beginning and then really kind of how you perform it in the end. So experiment with this. It's a great process and it really kind of is a lot of fun to work with.